Thanks for tuning in. My name is Angela Jackson. And I'm Rodney Countryman. And this week we have a special show just for you. Just for you. You don't want to miss it. Enjoy it. Hello everyone, my name is Isaiah McCollum. Today we're going to have someone come in and talk about Prestige, what Prestige is about, also what they do on campus. Next we're going to have some exclusive table talk, current events that's going on on campus, off campus, and around our world. Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Alexander. I'm the president of Prestige here. At Prestige, what we do is we give money to young men who uh, can't afford to go to college. Today we're going to talk about the Miss Prestigious pageant where we have the young ladies who dress up and showcase their talents in order to help us raise money and fundraise for these children. On the 29th of February at 7 p.m. to 11, I want you all to come support the Miss Prestigious pageant and turn the auditorium. Welcome, this is our portion of Table Talk. Today we have a special special guest, it's not Rodney. We all know Rodney, say hey Rodney. Uh, today we have Alea Burnham. She is a sophomore with a business administration major, a concentration in marketing, and a minor in English. Shout out to English majors. So, um, can you tell us where you're from? Uh, well, I was born in Manchester, Connecticut. Um, but I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, so that's where I graduated high school. So you've pretty much been everywhere, mm -hmm. pretty much. Well, this is our um, Boys and Corporate President. Let's give her a warm welcome. We just want to really want to thank you for being here today. Yes. So there was this um, post on Twitter, and as you, you all will be able to see on the screen, it says, "No one wants, no one wants what everyone has seen. Many females seek validation from others. They thrive on it. They do not care whether their reputation is tarnished." They simply care about the likes and praises, good comments made by others. This isn't confidence, this is low self-esteem. We need to get our brains, bodies, and self-respect on fleet. No man wants a woman that everyone knows what she got. So ladies, know your self-worth. So, with, you know, you see in the post, um, how do you feel about it first off? Um, I think, first off, when I, like if I were to read that post, because I haven't seen it, but if mm -hmm. I heard or read that post, um, I kind of feel offended, you know? Like mm -hmm. as a woman, I feel offended, um, not because of what they're saying, because what they're saying obviously holds truth, but um, I feel offended because it is true, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because as a woman, um, we're supposed to represent something. Um, we're supposed to represent strong and you know intelligent and all of those other great things, mm -hmm. um, but that post says something completely different. Mm -hmm. And so that's for all of the people out there who aren't living up to you know what an ideal woman should be like. Yeah. So um, my next question is, which role do you think plays big on this generation? Social media, family, or both, and why? Ooh, I definitely think social media. Mm -hmm. Social media weighs way heavier. Than family because I mean if you think about it even when we like go to like family events um, whether it be like a barbecue or you know a birthday or something like that um, we're on our phones constantly yeah. we're taking pictures of those things and putting those things on social media so I think that um, social media kind of weighs more in more on our lives and I feel like I mean although we're influenced and in stuff by our um, family mm -hmm. I feel like we're sh more strongly influenced by social media mm -hmm. because it uh, takes up more of our time. So wherever we are, if we're at the gym, or you know, if we're eating lunch, we're always on our phones, and we're usually on some sort of social media website, whether it be Snapchat or Facebook or yeah. Twitter. So. And I and to put um, my opinion in there, I think I really think that family and social media plays a big role because I look at it like, okay, what if you know, their the mom or dad doesn't give the attention to a daughter or a son then. Maybe they do go on social media to have that love, but what they see on social media is like, okay, you know, I'm not getting attention from home, so I'm gonna try to find some type of attention on social media or use that as my escape when you get on social media is half naked pictures, videos of 13 year olds twerking, not going to school. That I feel like both, I really does do feel like both plays in the game. Say, well, honestly, for social media only because to, you know, go off to what you said, that's what we do, even when. Like you said, when, when we're around our families, that's the first thing I do. I pull out my phone on like Instagram, Snapchat. Like that's the first thing you do. That's just because that's what we're prone to do. We're prone to look at, and we're just prone to looking at our phones. And I don't think that um, 
it plays negatively. I don't think that it always can play negatively on that generation as it, like as people try to make it seem because social media and stuff is not always negative because you can't find positivity out of social media such as like, I know that Facebook now have to where you can actually set up and sell stuff on Facebook. And granted sometimes that can be really tricky to do, but Facebook do have it and you know other businesses are gonna be getting recognized by people Facebook, so I think that um, social media plays a big role on our generation, but not always in a negative aspect, as we always try to make it out to see. We always try to make it seem that, oh, social media is so negative, but it's not always negative. It can be some positive in social media. And I kind of feel like, I mean, it's not really even our fault. So we're like the technological era, so I mean, we have all of these devices, and at the end of the day, I mean, we're going to use the devices. So why do you, because I don't know if you've seen it, but if you see it, like Instagram has these, what are they called? Waist trainers. Mm -hmm. Waist trainers, you know, you have women that's fighting to look what social media gives us. Why is that? Um, I think that there's always a way that we feel like we're supposed to look. And I kind of feel like that's the problem with this world. We always think things are supposed to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And no, not everything is never going to be one specific way. I mean, that's what makes us all different. Um, but I feel like social media sort of pressures us into feeling like we're supposed to look that way. But it's not always even social media, it can be where we live. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's what's around us um, that influences us. But also I think a lot of it has to do with men. Um, I think you know men make us feel like that's what they're looking for, and so that's the way that we're supposed to be. I don't know. Uh, I don't agree. Uh, I agree to a certain extent, but I don't agree. Um, men like. I think to me, men like them any like a lot of men like them anyway. Yes, a lot of men say, "Oh, I have a preference." But at the end of the day, a woman is a woman to a man, and a man is gonna want a woman. At the end of the day, that's me putting what I want to say in lamest terms, and trying to put it into terms to where it doesn't sound um, derogatory or anything, but a woman is a woman and a man wants a woman. So I feel as if um, I don't want a girl, I don't want to say I don't want a girl, but it's not um, important to me to have a girl that has a small waist. It's not important to me to have a girl that has thick thighs. That's not important to me. Though that is what I like to see because that's just what we like to see is what I like to see, but I don't feel that like that's what we like mm, for like, oh, this one we got to be like that. But that is what we like to see. It's a different thing. I, know, I want my girlfriend at the end of the day. That's who I want to be with. Just because I'm looking doesn't mean, like, of course we're going to look at thick. That's what we're going to look at. We look at Beyonce. We look at Nicki Minaj. Like, that's what we, that, we just look. You know, it's not as far as saying, oh, I wish my wife, you know. Not all men are thinking like, dang, I wish my girlfriend. You know, we don't all think like, I want my girlfriend to be that, you know. But at the end of the day, I kind of feel like, um, <coughs> although we are supposed to be a certain way in some men's eyes, I kind of think it's up to us to uh, be strong enough yeah. to know, yeah. you know, we're fine just the way that we are, yeah. and to accept that. Who would have thought I'd make it to college coming from the DMV? All those long nights, not wondering what. What was the outcome to happen? But somehow, some way, I made it right here. Now, subconsciously, I realized that I myself determined the fate of my future. On this journey, I've internalized two things. I am my biggest cheerleader, and I am also my greatest enemy. This means, though, I am capable of lifting my self-esteem to the clouds. I am also capable of plummeting down if I have a pessimistic attitude. But. I am in control of that. College has taught me to embrace being yourself and that you are constantly being watched even when you don't think you are. Now, college is, college is great, but one thing that you should always, always, always remember though, just be yourself, please. Whatever you do, be yourself. Don't let no one tell you different. Stay authentic. That's my, that's my little slogan, that's, that's my little ad lib. You know what I'm saying? So remember that, please. Peer pressure. None of that. Oh, don't do drugs either. <laughs> Peace. This is the time in our show where we like to spotlight people around campus that we see. It could be faculty, staff, students, 
whatever it is. We want to let you know that we see you. In this week's segment of We See a Spotlight, we would like to recognize Alicia Mobley. In her senior game here at Chowan, she reached a career high score of 32 points. Congrats, Alicia. Alicia Mobley will also be representing Chowan University at the CIAA tournament as Miss Chowan. Next is Alicia Butler. We recognize you for working really hard and diligently for the Singer Grams for Valentine's Day, sponsored by Phi Beta Lambda. We would like to recognize Ilanga Mansika, also known as Adida, for your closet full of recycled water bottles. Thank you for going green. Fourth on our We See You Spotlight list is Timothy Watts for his faithfulness in hosting community Bible studies every Friday night in the Sanaga Room at 7.30 and community prayer on Thursdays at 4.15. Fifth on our list is Ashley Brooks, an employee of the Thomas Cafeteria. We would like to thank him for his hard work and dedication in the CAF. Last but not least, we would like to recognize Cortez Smith for scoring his career high of 31 points on Saturday, January 30th, 2016. For the first week of February, he was also named CIAA Player of the Week. This has been We See You Spotlight. Hello students of Chowan University, it's your friend here, Jamel Jackson. Come on some announcements from CU Production. Uh, keep a look out in your email about the CIAA fan bus that's heading down to Charlotte for only $10. Uh, also, while down there, we have a couple of events. Apple Pie Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is competing for a step show, so pray for them. Hopefully, they bring home that win at Chowan University. Also, we have voted. We put in so much hard work for Miss Alicia Mobley to get up to Miss Chowan. So we pray that she brings home a CIAA. So keep praying your prayers and keep rooting for her. People, it's spring. So that includes our spring sports like lacrosse, softball, and baseball. So remember to go out and support all our CU players. Thank you for tuning in to this week's show. We really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Now this week, we challenge you to find a fact on an African-American that is recent. And history is being made every day. We just don't want to spend this time in February, you know, to find an African-American. But challenge yourself. Learn something new every day. That's right. And also, remember to, to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to be a part of the show, email us at wecuproductions at chawan.edu.